Need to clear out the lenses a little bit. Um, it's about to get deep. Shebushit is the greatest rapper in South Africa. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Rap emerged as a way to carry the block party into complete ecstasy into a vibe which could elevate people no matter what they were going through. In that moment, the master of ceremonies, the MC, when given the mic by the DJ, had the honor and the task of taking the audience on a journey that would allow them for that split second to realize that through art, possibility looms in the ways we're able to enjoy ourselves with each other. And the MC did this in a very simple way. He didn't do this by trying to be deep. They didn't do this by trying to appeal to people's intellect. They did it by appealing to people's heart. So before this craze that was created by the response to the, ho- the hyper-commercialization of rap, and as a result, there was a movement of rap which felt to make itself the extreme opposite of what was becoming purely rap for aspirational sake. There was a need for rap as the art of community narrative work. There was a need for rap as a way to tell the stories that are a bit more serious. And rap is both. But believe you me, it is more the former than it is the latter. The rapper, at their core, was born in a party. The rapper, at their core, was the aspect of the party which allowed for people to understand the context of why they were there. Simple chants like put your hands in the air and wave them like you just don't care are not as superfluous as you might think. These call and response mechanisms were akin to the mantra in Vedic spirituality. They were akin to sacred words that people utter in religious context. And if you can understand the importance of saying Amen after a prayer, or Tamaku, if you come from that culture and you're honoring your ancestors, or Togoza, if you're able to understand how short sentences or words, Namaste, Ase, if you're able to understand why the power of taking the immensity of reality and framing it in a single sentence or a single word becomes like a magical hymn to the lips, then you're able to understand why the simpler rappers are always the more impactful rappers. Enter Shebeshe, a gangster to TikToker from Limpopo whose musical creativity grabbed the attention of the audience because of just its raw feel and the fact that it was unapologetically brutal. Here was somebody who gave a mirror to the worst of what South Africa had become and the best of what it could be. Simply by being so driven, being so charismatic, but also understanding the fact that his authenticity was the pulse that could communicate to the people. When he goes, Twekawena, and all of these simple phrases, other rappers want to mark him as a wannabe rapper who's simply uttering the same sentence like it's nothing. But isn't that the same principle of hypnotism? Don't you have to repeat something over and over again in order to loop people into a trance? So isn't there more power in repetition than there is in variety? I'm not contrasting these. I'm simply saying that repetition is not the opposite 
of creativity. It's the method to simplify creativity into formula, thereby allowing the audience to be captured, matter of fact, spellbound by a particular sentence or a word and how you deliver it. And that, my dear folks, in its bare simple context, is the origin of rap. Rap, in its essence, is about the block party, Imbala, Ipotoi, whatever you want to call it. The rapper is at home in the midst of where the people find they can navigate their woes through ecstasy. Now the rapper can be found in conversation, in reflection. And this is where I think mixtapes and albums come in, in that they are an opportunity for you to take this art home with you in some form and allow it to spread into the rest of your life. See, this is where rappers needed to be more than the party. When they branched out into actually making music, the necessity to not be one-dimensionally caged and to apply yourself to the variety of people's experiences became essential. But let's not get it twisted. Rap is mostly accentuated, honed, and grows in the midst of the party. And I'll tell you why. The rapper is expanded by the party because the party is where society tries to find a semblance of happiness. There will always be an importance for music that caters to the diversity of people's experiences. But nowhere will it ever be more important than in these places we go to to quote-unquote enjoy ourselves. Because at our core, we are social creatures. And where we meet together is where things are born. When we are alone is when we have the time to reflect on them. When we have the time to act on them. When we have the time to truly assess them. But it is when we are in the presence of others that they are working. That they are active, gestating. This collective fervor of coming as a people and finding a common style and feature through which we can take the pressure and the pain of our lives and use art as a vehicle to momentarily transcend that is how art will be fundamentally consumed by the people. So for every quote-unquote hip-hop head who believes that the club is what killed rap? No. Capitalism killed rap. The club is simply an instrument through which people use in contemporary times to try and find a semblance of fun. The club is an extension of any other ritualistic celebration that we've had practically since the beginning of time. And in whatever shape or form it comes in, the art that comes alive in those moments is the art that constitutes who we are as a people. So Shebeshit, as aggressive, as explicit, as corrupting as a lot of his lyrics may be, they are merely an expression of what is possible, of what has existed and what continues to exist in this country. Should he be socially responsible with his words? That is the question. But whether or not he is or he isn't doesn't take away the impact of those words. And the fact that if rap is a tool to communicate with where people are in a language they understand, turned into the brevity of poetry and their experiences, then who is really doing anything close to that right now? I mean, that's a real question. It seems as if most South African rappers are too interested 
in adapting themselves to Americanized models, to painting images of luxurious lives, than actually getting people to have fun. And I think if we are going to assess the essence of what Shewa Shit has become as a phenomenon, topping charts whilst not being on old media platforms that much and radio and such and such then we see that no matter what we think there is an irresistible connection that the audience is having with this artist and what is that about? Uh, the local uh, heads are saying uh, South Africans are dumb <laughs> For liking such music. And for me, arguments like that are elitist Mm -hmm. and are, you know, the highest level of snobbery. If you're going to reduce people's experiences to an intelligence test, then you're doing yourself a disservice because you're not understanding the reasons why they connect with something. There's a reason why things are popular. And it isn't because of a conspiracy theory to somehow lure people into negative imagery. What that is, is something they're already familiar with and some way charmed by. For me, I think Shebeshit speaks to this image of a rebellious spirit, which is exploited a lot in South African pop culture. This is why almost every other drama has a maki inside in it. And this is why even classically in Hollywood, the image of the anti-hero, the image of somebody who decides to um, take from the system. The ski mask way. The thug. Is the classical image of this free spirit. That will by any means necessary transcend its limitations. A limitations imposed unto it by an oppressive system. And I think it's the same thing in Shemeshit that a lot of youth are attracted to. There's a freedom about who he is. There is a risque element about the fact that people who don't seem to follow the lines of morality and yet pursue their freedom in ways that we could not fathom lure us into the possibilities of who we could be when we question whether or not being right is more important than being free. I think on that note, talk to me on the comment section. If you think this is a whole bunch of bullshit, please do. If you agree with me, if you're a little bit in the middle, whatever it is, let's push this conversation forward. I'm not trying to troll. I am not trying to Clickbait, I legitimately think, right now, Shemeshit is the most interesting rapper in this country. So, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe, please.